بسم الله بسم الله رب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله والصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى قيام الساعة. Surely all praises belong to Allah alone. He is one and has no partner. And we invoke His peace and blessings upon His noble messenger, after whom there is no more messenger or prophet to come. His family, His companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the hour is established. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, the last 10 nights of Ramadan have begun. And I pray that Allah the Exalted will help us and guide us and enable us to utilize this wonderful time in which we have to make some sacrifice but the grace and the blessings are of course more than worth the sacrifice now on Monday we talked about which night it is and I think we all agree now based on the authentic ahadith of the Prophet it is one of the odd nights and actually this morning was one of those odd nights, the first odd night. What I would like to talk about today, a couple of things. The first is, what exactly is Laylatul Qadr? Why is it called Laylatul Qadr? And what gave rise to Laylatul Qadr? Now the popular belief of most Muslims is that Laylatul Qadr is the night that Allah revealed the very first revelation to the Prophet ﷺ. When he was on the cave uh, of Hira on uh, Jabal al Nur. This is the popular belief. But this is actually incorrect. Laylatul Qadr is not the first revelation that Allah revealed to the Prophet. ﷺ. Actually, as Ibn Kathir mentions in his tafsir, and he mentions a number of narrations from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah that Laylatul Qadr, which is the revelation of the Qur'an, is the sending down of the entire Qur'an from Allah the Exalted to Baytul Izza in Asama'i Dunya, to the house of glory and majesty, Baytul Izza in the lowest heaven. And it's called the lowest heaven as Ibn Kathir mentions it's, it's in relation to the earth. We on earth, what, what we look up and we, we see above us in terms of space, that's considered the lowest heaven. A sama'i dunya that is closest to the earth. So, the revelation of the Quran that gave rise to Laylatul Qadr, because Allah tells us He revealed it in Laylatul Qadr. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Surely we have revealed it in Laylatul Qadr. What is this revelation? It's the sending down of the whole Qur'an from Allah to the lowest heaven, to Baytul Izzah. And then from there, Allah the Exalted revealed it in bits and pieces over a period of 23 years to the Prophet So Laylatul Qadr is not the revelation sent to the Prophet Actually, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, in his tafsir, mentions a narration from Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhumah, in which one of the students of Ibn Abbas said to him, how can Allah say that he revealed the Quran in Ramadan as the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, or that he revealed it in the night of power, when we know that most of the Quran was revealed in, in the other months? And Ibn Abbas said to him, that's not what this uh, uh, verse means. When Allah says he revealed the Quran in Ramadan, it's not a revelation to the Prophet and then he explained that this revelation was the sending down of the entire Qur'an. The whole Qur'an in its entirety to the lowest heaven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to know this, that Laylatul Qadr is the sending down of the revelation of the entire Qur'an to the lowest heaven. And then, of course, over uh, the 23 years, as events unfolded, Allah would reveal it in bits and pieces to the Prophet ﷺ. Now, to also some substantiate this, in Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala tells us about the claim or one of the claims of the disbelievers. You know, they were just looking for every excuse, not just to deny, 
but to be vocal about their, de their denial. As we say these days, you know, they rub it in your face. So they, they said to the Prophet ﷺ, or they said, Allah says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا Allah says, and those who disbelieve say, why doesn't the Qur'an come down to him at once, all at once, jumlatan wahid, the whole of it at once. In the same verse, Allah says, kadhalik. Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi in his tafsir mentions a view among some of the Mufassireen that this word kadhalik, which means like this, meaning, we sent it down like this, meaning, all at once. But this he said, Al Imam Al Qurtubi in his tafsir of this ayah, he said this refers to the sending down of the entire Quran to the lowest heaven. So when the disbelievers ask for it to be revealed all, all at once, Allah says, Listen, I have done that. But he also chose to reveal it in bits and pieces to the Prophet, as he says in the same verse, لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ so that we can comfort your heart. وَرَتَّلْنَاهُ تَرْتِيلًا So, the first issue we need to know and understand about Laylat al-Qadr or the revelation in the, of the Qur'an in Ramadan or in Laylat al-Qadr, it's the revelation or the sending down of the whole Qur'an to the lowest heaven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the revelation to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. The second thing is, why is it called Qadr? Allah called it Laylatul Qadr in the Quran. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. And then in the ayah in Surah Al Dukhan, He describes the night as being blessed. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Mubaraka. Surely we have revealed it in a blessed night. So why is it called Qadr? Al Hafiz Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, in discussing this issue in uh, his book Fatwa Al Bari, which is an explanation of Sahih Al Bukhari, by the way. A very detailed explanation, mashaAllah. He mentions three opinions. Why it is called Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. The first is the word Qadr means ta'zim, someone with status, someone important. And the word Qadr actually was used in the Quran with this meaning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wama qadarullaha haqqa qadrihi. They did not elevate Allah to the position or to the importance that He deserves. So, Qadr can mean importance, status, ta'zim, when you elevate someone to a high status. And this, Ibn, Ibn Hajr mentions, is due to either the descent of many angels during this night to the earth. I mean, we know that, uh, that there are angels on the earth as we speak. Each one of us, we have two angels recording everything we do and say. Then there are angels, as Allah mentions in another ayah, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِّن بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِّن خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِّن أَمْرِ اللَّهِ There are other angels who are here on the earth. We don't know them, we don't see them. But they protect us, as Allah says, from the commands of Allah. So perhaps there are things that Allah has decreed, that would harm us, but they're angels Allah has appointed to protect us from these things. But in addition to that, more angels come down and in Laylatul Qadr. And so as a result, the night is one of importance. So many angels to be coming in. Because the presence of angels, brothers and sisters, as we know well, is an indication. It is indicative of blessings and good things. Or, Ibn, Ibn Hajar mentioned, it is uh, a night of importance due to the tremendous blessings and mercy and grace that descend from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we need to strive for it. Wake up and pray. The, the mercies and the grace and, and the, the forgiveness are tremendous. And as a result, the night is important. Or, the third opinion is that the people who make the sacrifice to wake up and pray in this night, they are the ones who are people of importance because they have the himma, they have the desire, the strong desire to achieve the blessings that Allah has promised in this night and they're willing to do the sacrifice or make the sacrifice in order to achieve that. 
So this is one view that Qadr means ta'zim, that is giving importance to. The other opinion is that Qadr means restriction, narrowing. And the word was also used with this meaning in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقًا In Surah Al-Fajr, Allah talks about the human being who is tested by his Lord. How? فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقًا By restricting his sustenance. So the word Qadr can mean restricting, mean narrowing. And this, Ibn Hajar mentions, uh, means uh, is a result of the angels that the many angels who descend so it's like you know a busy highway with a lot of traffic it becomes jammed with with uh, with traffic with angels back and forth because allah tells us in surah al-qadr that in this night the angels and the ruh the spirit this is jibrail alayhi salam they descend based on the command of their Lord. So we know more angels come down than normal and so it becomes like a busy place, a place that is now congested, so to speak. So it is as if it has become con constricted or narrow. And the third meaning that the scholars have mentioned is Qadr with Sukoon on the Dal, not Fatha, is Related to the word Qadr with Fatha on the Dal. Most of us are familiar with Qadr, Al Qada wal Qadr, Al Qada wal Qadr, predestination. Qadr here with Sukun on the Dal refers to the details of the original decree, the Qadr of Allah for the next year that Allah informs the angels about. So it's called Qadr, meaning that during uh, this night, the affairs, the details of the affairs of the next year are made known to the angels because they have job, work to do. So during this night, Allah gives them the details. So they know of the details uh, a year in advance, not more than that. And in Surah Al-Dukhan, Allah alluded to this when He said, "Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim." In this night, in it. Every wise or important matter is decreed, that is, made known to the angels. So these are the three opinions among the scholars as to why it is called Qadr. So we call it Laylatul Qadr because Allah called it Laylatul Qadr. Now, the other issue is the virtues of this night. The virtues, of course, are tremendous. First of all, Allah refers to it as a blessed night. Laylatul Mubarakah. And it is called a blessed night because obviously there are blessings in this night that cannot be found on other nights. So this is the first virtue. The second is that worship in this night is better than a thousand months of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Qadr, Laylatul Qadr khayru min alfi shahr. The night of Qadr is better than a thousand months. A thousand months of what? A thousand months of ibadah. So what it will take? An entire lifetime. Because a thousand, if you divide it by 12, you will get 83.4. So 83 years and four months. A whole lifetime. What's the average lifespan of, the, of a person in this part of the world? About 80 something years maybe. So what it will take a, a person a whole lifetime to achieve through ibadah and worship and striving? Allah's mercy and grace, of course, are limitless. And so in this one night, Allah has endowed this one night with the same equivalent value, better than a thousand months. And what's interesting is Allah did not say equal to, mind you. He said better than. We're just calculating based on equal to. But Allah said better than. How much more than that, we don't know. The third virtue the Prophet ﷺ mentions in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, he said, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفْرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Forgiveness of sins, all sins. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever prays in Laylatul al-Qadr, and as we heard Monday, it is one of the odd nights. 
So to ensure that we pray in Laylatul Qadr, we must observe all the odd nights. Whoever prays in Laylatul Qadr, Iman, with sincere devotion, with sincerity, Wahtisaban, and hoping for a reward only from Allah. So we're not doing it for any other objective. Ghufir Allahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. All his or her previous sins will be forgiven. And this alone is a tremendous blessing and virtue of the night. If this was the only reason why we should pray Laylatul Qadr, it would have been enough. It would suffice. In addition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Qadr that this night is a night of peace and calm and tranquility. Salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr. It is a night of peace and calm and tranquility until the rising of the Fajr, the breaking of dawn. So these are the virtues of this night and the virtues are there, brothers and sisters. It is up to you and I to decide whether we have the desire and we want it bad enough to make the sacrifices that we need to make in order to wake up, give up some sleep, perhaps the best part of our sleep, at, this, at, the, at the early hours before Fajr. Uh, but if we have the desire and the will and we want it bad enough, then inshallah we stand a good chance, bi'ibnillah, of course, to achieve these blessings. And we pray and we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not deprive us of the blessings and the virtues, His mercy, His forgiveness, and His grace of this night. One last thing I want to mention regarding this is often people ask, are we only supposed to pray during this night? Well, the answer is no. Prayer, of course, is the main thing or the, the most important thing we should engage in during the night of Qadr. But any other form of dhikr is also recommended. And the dhikr comes mainly in three forms. One, there is the recitation of Quran. So if you're praying and you feel a bit tired, you can take a break and spend half an hour, 20 minutes, whatever it is, recite some Qur'an. So recitation of Qur'an. Then there is the tasbihat, glorifying and praising and exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can spend some time doing that. And then of course there is dua. In a hadith in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, which is authentic, Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, she said to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if I knew exactly which night is Laylatul Qadr, what is the best dua I can say? And he said to her, Say, Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. O oh Allah, you are afu, you are the forgiver, kareem, you are gracious. Tuhibbul afwa, you love to forgive, fa'afu anni, so forgive me. He told her this is the best dua to make in this night. And of course, uh, our duas in Laylatul Qadr is not, are not limited to only this one. But this is certainly one of the duas we should be repeating during this night. So in addition to praying, we can also engage in these other forms of dhikr during this night. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only uh, help us and make it easy for us to wake up and pray and make dua and so on, but that, more importantly, Allah the Exalted will accept our prayers, our salah, our qiyam, our duas, our dhikr, and all our good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed from mankind. And may He inspire and motivate us to live by this message. May Allah the Exalted help us and guide us to wake up and make the sacrifice in order to achieve the blessings He has promised in the night of Qadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our prayers, our du'as, our dhikr, and all our good deeds. May He forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings. May He also cause us to be among those with whom He is pleased in the month of Ramadan. May He cause us to be among those whose fasting and prayers and du'as and good deeds He would have accepted in the month of Ramadan. May He cause us to be among those whose necks he would have set free in the month of Ramadan. May he cause us to be among those upon whom he would have showered his mercy and his grace in the month of Ramadan. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahani wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
And don't please don't forget Sadaqatul Fitr. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum.